she called the police because she completely freaked out. She thought that there was something, like I had gone insane, you know. And so the police, I remember them coming up to the apartment, what's the problem? She didn't speak any English, so, you know, she asked me to explain. So I tell the, I tell the policeman, right, and I'm like totally humiliated. And the cop just laughs and he says, you know, uh, your son's a fag, you know. And he says, we can't do anything about it. Just before my 15th birthday, I just left home for a while. I wanted to rent these cheap hotel rooms that they used to have in Chicago along Lincoln Avenue. I think they cost like 50 cents a day. But in a way, that's, I would dress up like a girl and I would go out in the street, right? And it was very dangerous. We're talking 1964. And they actually had laws that would put you in jail if you were caught cross-dressing and everything. I feel like there's a war right now against um, trans women, um, specifically trans women of color. I think um, a lot of white people in our community are allies of people of color. But I think to be a true ally, um, you have to admit to your white privilege, acknowledge it, and use that and help them navigate, navigate the system um, that's built against them. People of color, we need to um, put more trust in our allies. Um, stop thinking that everybody is against us and that um, they won't accept us and then they're not going to truly love us. You know, I just would love to see it end and us all come together because at the end of the day, we are one people. Like, talk for hours about, like, sexual violence and, like, people not getting their medicine and, like, you know, like self-harm and cutting and suicide and like all the stuff that happens on the inside that's very hard to wrap our heads around and our hearts around. Um, but then the way that people like manage to still do them on the inside and resist all of that. I've literally had clients that will dance, you know, for 15 minutes with no music, nothing, and they'll dance and they get thrown into isolation. And, make beautiful drawings or tattoo their own bodies um, with artwork because they're in a cell by themselves for, you know, 24 hours a day. And the true zealousness of, I feel like, queer people and trans people, you know, that even in this system that is trying to strip all of that from me, I'm still going to vogue. In light of C.C. McDonald, it's not just enough for us to be proud of who we are. And movements have been growing, but now we're at that point where it's like, how can they evolve, you know? And I feel like at some point, prides were necessary. When us just coming out to show people that we exist, it really was revolutionary. But at this point, it's a moot point to me. At this point, for me, it's about moving forward beyond just saying we exist. It's about making our demands. So I'm excited about sort of how do we hold our history and how do we 
share it with others. Um, and the other thing I'm really interested in movement-wise, especially for trans and genderqueer people, knowing our history then, what do we do next? Like I said, I want, I want people I work with to do whatever it is that they want.